I'm Jade from Profile Tree here and in this series of videos I'm just going to be taking you through the steps to create different elements using Bootstrap 4. Uh, so we're going to begin on the actual Bootstrap website here and you can see that you can download or paste in the CSS and JavaScript uh, links directly into your text editor. Throughout this series I'm going to be using Notepad um, as my text editor. So if we go to documentation and you can see that it will give you the direct links to their CSS and JavaScript files. But we're just going to start off with this starter template here. And then I'll run it in the browser just to show you what it looks like. So paste that in and then I'll save it as test.html and if I run that in Chrome then you can see that the title appears. So we know that everything's working perfectly. We can move on to the first element which today we're going to work on menus. So if you go to components and down to navs and navbar. So I'm just going to start with navs just to explain the different types that you can get. So here we can see the basics of the navigation. Uh, it starts with a unordered list. So you have the nav class which creates the actual um, navigation itself and then you create the different items within the nav and within that you have your links so the first link is called active and within the list nav item tag you have the link which is the a tag and then within that you have the nav link class and active class for the first one here uh, the active class just means that if you are on let's say the about page or something like that then the about page will well, depending on what your CSS is for that particular nav, you can have it a different colour from the rest of the nav bar, have it underlined or a different font style. You can apply tons of different styles to it, but it's just something that will help the user identify what page they're on at that time. And then the list continues with the other separate uh, nav link items as well. And the last disabled nav class here uh, that just basically means that the user can't click on that link so you could have that available on a certain page so if you're in every single page that you create for your website you have to have your nav bar included so if you wanted to have the third link disabled on the about page or on the home page um, you can just add that as a separate class within the a tag and if we move on, there's a simpler version which doesn't use the unordered list. You can just directly uh, include them as link tags. And you also have the nav tag instead of the unordered list tag for the nav class. Moving down, you have different alignments. So if you add on to the nav class justify content center that will center all of the list items within that unordered list or you can have justify content end which will right align the content and the same if you say justify content start that will left align all the items. If you use the flex column class with the nav class, you have this vertical arrangement of items which just aligns all the items in a vertical list and they also have the default of left alignment. You also have different styles, so here you have tabs which can be created by adding the nav tabs class and then you have the nav pills class which creates that coloured box around the items or you can have fill and justify which fills the background of the whole list item and justifies the content. That requires two classes because you have the nav pills style and then you have the nav fill. 
you can also create drop down menus. So if I click on this, you can have links within the drop down menu and a line separator. And that's done using the nav item class as well with the with the list tag. But within the A class, you have drop down toggle, which works as a button so that when you press the down arrow, it shows the actual links here within that drop down menu class. And then you can also include the drop down divider or you can take it away. It depends on what uh, pages you're including in your site. You can also use the drop down menu for the different styles of links, like the tabs and the pills. So if we go into the nav bar section, we'll be able to get started on our navigation. So this is the code which creates this full nav bar here with a search box and button as well. Uh, I'm going to take that out just for this example, but I'll leave in the rest of the links. You can also manipulate the different colors of nav bars that you're going to get. So here you have nav bar light. If you want to have a dark nav bar, you just change the class to nav bar dark. And then you can also change the color of your actual brand as well. Or you can include an image instead of text and you can edit the height and width to suit the height of your nav bar. So here you can see the example of the active link. So the active link in this example is the home nav item and that is a darker shade than the rest of the links here because that's the page that the user would currently be on since the class is set to active. But as you move through the site, you want to change it. So if I clicked on the features link, you want to take the active away from the home nav item and place it in with the next nav item for the features. So I'm just going to use the first example that we have here. paste it into the body. I'm just going to save that and then run it in Chrome. So you can see it looks exactly as it, as it was on the Bootstrap website. The home link is active and the last link is disabled as well. So let's just make a few changes. I'm going to take out the search bar. And I'm going to change the link to active. Also, I'm just going to leave the drop down menu there as an example. And I want to change the nav items into tabs. So you go to the unordered list class here and add in nav tabs. Save that and refresh. So now you can see that the tabs have been created for the nav links. You still have the drop down menu and the search bar has also disappeared on the right hand side here. So let's also add some of our own CSS styles. So I'm just going to create a separate style sheet. If I save that and I'll just shrink this window so that I can create the style sheet to the right. And save. 
Just check to make sure that that's the correct name. Yeah, style. .css. So if I drag this over here, so the first thing I'm going to do is change the font size of the navbar brand. So you start that by just typing dot, which represents a class. Um, navbar dash brand. Open brackets. Close brackets. I'm going to set the font size to 40 points, end it with a semicolon and save. Let's refresh it in the browser. You can see that the text size is significantly increased there. If you want to simply test out what like different shades and, and styles for your, for your nav bar, you just right click and hit inspect. That will open the element inspector which will show you the HTML on the left hand side here. So I'm currently hovered over at the first nav link in the nav bar. And you can see the styles that are applied to that over here on the right. So if I change that color to red, you can see that the elements that have the nav bar light navbar nav and nav link classes are highlighted red now. The reason that the link button didn't change colour was because it's active so it's a different colour than the rest of the links. And you can also change the colours and, and styles when you hover over the elements so you just click this colon hover um, element state and select the hover active and focus checkboxes and that will show you the styles that are applied so you can see that the color is black once the item is focused or hovered over so I'll change that to blue and you can see that that was the most recent hovered item so now the actual link has changed to blue. That's really as simple as it is and if you are okay with the styles that you've applied within the element inspector this won't directly change your website so if you want to make the changes permanent um, I would normally just copy the style that I have here and paste it into my style sheet. Save that so that when I refresh the styles that I have applied within the element inspector have disappeared but if I go to hover over the item it's now hovering blue so you know that it works. And that's really all it is to make a nav bars. It's always handy just to take the direct template from the bootstrap website and manipulate it to suit your website. So that's it for this video and thanks for listening. Check out the rest of our videos for tips on how to create forms and other elements within your site. Thanks.